you up to date on the Sardson? We've had a few people ask what we're doing, so I thought, well, we'll bring you up to date. As you know, it was a lovely original car that we bought from Portugal. And my philosophy is that when you make a car that's absolutely original and it only needs a few things doing to it, you don't make the good original stuff look like the new stuff. You make the new stuff look like the old stuff. And that's what we're doing. And that's what we're going to talk about now. But this all started in 1972. I bought a Morgan three-wheeler in a barn. And I got it home and my friend Tony Collard was a bricklayer and he was one of these blokes that sort of knew about things. And he said, what are you going to do with it? I said, oh, we're going to take it all to bits and we're going to rebuild it. And he went, what are you doing? Let's get it going. Let's get up the road in it. Anyway, I said, yeah, but the body works. He said, put longer screws in it. Anyway, we bodged it up and it needed new wings. And I had the wings made and I painted them with creosote. And made the whole thing match. Anyway, in 1972, there was a big meeting at Prescott. And we went to Prescott in this old car, all bodged up, but looking good. It wasn't rubbish. Anyway, we was there all day, and they had a concourse, etc. And during the time which we were there, Hamish Moffat walked up to me. Now, Hamish Moffat was my hero. He raced the Type 35 uh, Bugatti on beaded edge wheels, and at one stage, he made the fastest time of the day up Prescott in the pouring rain and beat everybody on beating edge wheels. And I was very impressed by that. Anyway, Hamish Moffat came up to me and he said, Ivan, that's the best Morgan here. And I thought, well, if, if it's good enough for Hamish Moffat, it's the right thing to do. Now, following on for that, another 50 years, I've practiced modifying and, and um, antiquing and making bits look like the bits that are original. And that's exactly what we're going to do to the Sarpson. And I will now explain to you what we're going to do. And um, we'll make a video of it, obviously. Right, so now you will remember that the woodwork on this car was eaten with woodwork. So I had the woodwork redone. And it was done by a man who was a pattern maker, not a bodywork man. And pattern makers are used to dealing in very small, you know, work into very close tolerances. So that's why this car's got all its proper shape. So then I took it to another bloke I know who's really good, who did, who did the panels and put them back on the original, on the new woodwork. And my, I said to him, don't knock all the dents out. We don't want it to look like a bit of plastic. We want it to look original. So obviously he fitted it very well and it's very clever because the front and the back had to be put together and welded on the car and there's a weld on the inside I can't believe how they did it but anyway they did it so now you can see so then the colour luckily we took a part of the chassis and underneath was the original colour which was red we know it was red because Don Hill looked in the works records and said yeah it was supplied to Portugal and it was red so anyway so we copied the colour as near as we could and this is what it finished up right but you may say this looks a bit pink and I'll agree with you it does look a bit pink but after we've done the antiquing program pro antiquing process you will see that it, it looks a different color this is a piece of metal which I've already done a bit of antiquing on as you can see it's a much nicer color so the idea is to do the whole car like this so that it all looks real. I don't want to come out of the supermarket and somebody says to me, oh, you've done a wonderful job, it looks like new. That's not what you do to something that's a lovely original car. You make it look like you haven't touched it. I want somebody to walk up to me and say, oh, where did you find that? It doesn't look like it's ever been touched. Right, so now this is what we're going to do. I'm, I'm telling you all my secrets now. Cheap underseal. Dirty old bit of rag, duck oil. Now this will stain the paint. The paint will not be the same colour. If you leave that on, I shall leave that on all weekend and it will eventually, it will stain the paint. But it will bring it down and it will look a better red. It won't look pink. 
And then obviously little bits that get left in the corner so it'll look really good. And underneath the bonnet, I've sprayed it completely. So this has had a complete spray. And again, Monday, I will rub it off. Duck oil. And it will dull the paint down, make it a bit of red, a little bit of dirt left in the corners, and it will look like it's never been touched. Well, originally we were thinking of coach painting this, which we could do, but I find coach paint doesn't stand up to too much abuse. And I intend to use this car, so we've actually done it in two pack, which of course has got nothing to do with vintage days, but it will take a lot of abuse. And that's why we did it. But as you can see, it's very shiny. So what we do, we flat it with 1500. 1500. And that takes the shine off it. And then we polish it. And it comes up like that. Now, as you can see, that looks quite nice and old. Might try putting some antiquing stuff on it just to make it look. That will get dulled down. So in, in the end, it will look like a good old car that survived rather than a car that's been just made new, which I'm not a great believer in. I mean, if you manage to find a couple of bits and you're going to build yourself a car, then you can't avoid it looking like new. But when you've got a good original car, I mean, if you look at the antique dealers, when they buy a chest of drawers and it's got a drawer missing, they make the drawer that they're going to make look like the rest of the antique chest of drawers. They don't make it look new. So that's what we're doing. And um, obviously, we'll keep you up to date on this car now because we've got a new lady making the videos and we should be able to really be proper now rather than here, there and everywhere. But anyway, so that's the start on the, on the uh, Samson. We've also got the trimmer organising, organised, and he is doing the trim. And we've decided to have it done in plastic, because the original car was done in Rexy. And obviously, the nearest thing to Rexy today is vinyl. So we're going to have it done in vinyl. Most people have things done in leather, because it costs a fortune to do it and they can't appear to spend all that money and do it in plastic. But I ain't like that. I've decided that as it was never leather, this is a cycle car built to a price. So that's what we're going to do. And I think when it's finished, it'll look a knockout. So then, when you rub it, as you can see, this is very shiny. You rub it and it gets that lovely look. Now, over the years, when you clean it, obviously you won't polish it back up. You leave it looking like that. Now, you can see that this is very shiny. So we use 1500 wet and dry with a bit of soap and we flat it. So as you can see, that sort of knocked the shine off it and obviously it looks more in keeping with that which is all original. I don't intend to polish that either, that will just be looked after. The whole car will be looked after, but we won't make it look comfortable, that's for sure. Right, the next thing I'll talk about is the seats. If you see the original um, video, you'll see that when we got the car, it had the original seats. And I've looked at the original seats, and I know that if we start work on them, before you know where you are, they're going to look new. So I've decided now, as I'm going to drive the car a lot, I would make a comfortable seat, adjustable, so that my granddaughters can drive the car, and leave the original seats alone, because they're original. You never know if this finishes up in a museum in, in years to come, when we're not allowed to drive them, possibly. Somebody could put the original seats back, give them a little bit of a wipe over, and it would be a miracle that it's still got its original seat. So we decided not to touch them. But we've got some original material here, which of course is Rexy, and we've more or less matched this up with vinyl. 
and hopefully it's not going to look too bad. It's a very dark grey colour and I might have a go at antiquing the vinyl a little bit to try and match it all in but we'll see. That's something else we can make a video of. But that's how we've got so far and um, I think before the end of the year we're going to be driving this about and I'd like to go on an adventure with it and probably go, I don't know, drive it down to south of France or something. I'm not going to Montanari because it's all too difficult with carnage and one thing and another and um, so we're going to be doing a lot of work rather than a lot of gadding about really.